Among mid-size luxury crossovers, the Audi Q7 has been a well-established player within the segment since its introduction a little over a decade ago. Last revamp for the 2016 model year, the Q7 ranks as one of the more favorable choices among the segment. So let's go ahead and take an in-depth look at this 2018 Audi Q7. First off, the Q7 is the brand's largest and most expensive crossover offering, measuring at approximately 198.9 inches in length and 77.7 .7 inches in width, the Q7 slots in between a full-size and a mid-size crossover. The styling direction of the Audi brand focuses more on a mature and elegant presence, and you'll find many contemporary styling amenities such as LED tail lights, headlights, and these phenomenal looking 20 inch bespoke alloy wheels which are actually optional. Not much has changed for the 2018 model year however, but you will find minor equipment shuffling for the trim levels. Our trim of the Q7 we also have here is the mid trim premium plus model equipped with the optional 3 liter supercharged V6 engine. This exterior color of the Q7 is known as the Carrara White and it is equipped with smart key access on all four doors of the vehicle. Here's the key fob for the Q7. Pretty good looking key fob. You have your unlock, your lock, as well as your power tailgate and your panic alarm. You also have a full on black leather interior. Perforated leather seats. Power driver seat with your power recline and your power lumbar four way. All right, stepping on inside of the Q7, the step in height is pretty low, of course, and you're treated to a very welcoming, inviting, and opulent cabin, while simultaneously is pretty simplistic by nature. But I also love the wood grain interior trim that gives it a premium vibe inside of here, as well as the brushed aluminum that you'll find throughout the whole entire cabin. You do have push button ignition, just put your foot on the brake and hit the button to start. And what you're hearing there is a 3 liter supercharged V6. Full leather wrapped steering wheel. Coming to your transmission, we have an 8 speed automatic. You go down for drive like this, as well as up for reverse. When you put the vehicle into reverse, this will display your 360 degree view camera. You have your rear view, of course, corner rear view, a top down view, a front view, as well as your corner front view. And you also do have paddle shifters if you wanna shift the vehicle manually, of course. Let's go and turn on the hazards and check out the exterior of the Q7. All windows are fully automatic. Heated exterior side mirrors with side LED turn signal indicators, and you also have blind spot detection as well. And you have these stunning looking 20 inch V spoke alloy wheels. Coming up front here, you'll find full LED headlights for the low and the high beams, as well as LED turn signal indicators and LED daytime running lights. Powering the Q7 is your upgraded engine here. It's a three liter supercharged V6 that produces 333 horsepower at 5,500 RPM and 325 pound-feet of torque at 2,900 RPM with EPA estimates being a pretty reasonable 19 in the city and 25 on the highway. And it does run on premium unleaded fuel. Now, if you want, you can go with the two liter turbocharged four cylinder, which is your standard engine, which is considerably uh, lower in price of course and is a little more fuel efficient than the supercharged v6 but this v6 does get the q7 up and moving and it's pretty potent and could tow up to 7700 pounds but we'll see what this baby could do when we hit the road later in the video 
pricing of the Q7 starts at the base premium model, which starts at 49900 That gives you a Xenon headlights, a panoramic moonroof, and a power folding third row. Moving on to the Premium Plus, like how we have here, that gives you the 3D Bose surround sound system, LED interior lighting, and Audi's MMI navigation system. Moving all the way up to the top of the line Prestige, that gives you the 20-inch 10-spoke star design wheels, as well as a top view camera system and Audi's virtual cockpit. Coming to the rear of the vehicle, you have full-on LED tail lights as well as LED turn signal indicators. Competitors of the Q7, you're looking at vehicles in the mid-size luxury crossover class. This includes the likes of the Mercedes-Benz GLE, BMW X5, Acura MDX, and the Volvo XC90. You have all of your basic power necessities, including power windows, your power exterior mirrors. They are power folding as well. Very convenient. And your memory seat settings for two people, as well as your power door locks. While many other luxury crossovers are going towards a more comfort-oriented nature, the Q7 retains the athleticism, which you will find the vehicle to be fairly nimble and agile, feeling as if it's smaller than what it really is. You won't sacrifice ride quality either as jolts and bumps minimally make its way to the cabin. Road imperfections are also smoothed out very well and precisely in the Q7 and those with the V6 will enjoy the extra added power over the standard Turbo 4 with easy passing maneuvers that are very quick, especially when merging onto a freeway or anything of that nature. Road imperfections are also smoothed out very well and precisely in the Q7, and those with the V6 will enjoy the extra added power over the standard Turbo 4 with easy passing maneuvers that are very quick, especially when merging onto a freeway or anything of that nature. Compared to other vehicles, Compared to other vehicles in the class, the Q7 offers the striking balance of ride comfort and handling that many others in the class are. Compared to other vehicles in the class, the Q7 offers the striking balance of ride comfort and handling that many other crossovers within the class are missing out on. And I just love the power from this supercharged V6 engine and the eight speed automatic is just, wonderful it's that really nice added touch and it's just very refined the q7 features an impeccably built interior with very rich and premium feeling materials throughout the whole entire cabin and there's plenty of soft touch materials such as on the door panels here as well as the dashboard nothing really feels particularly cheap inside of here and everything feels pretty sturdy and it has that typical german build quality and it's what you would expect out of a german luxury vehicle Let's get to the steering wheel design. Pretty basic stuff here. I love the brushed aluminum and it's a fairly stylish steering wheel. On the left you'll find your controls for the Audi virtual cockpit display which I'll get to in just a minute. Over here we have your voice recognition, Bluetooth phone controls, steering wheel mounted audio controls, your heated steering wheel which I'll show you up on the virtual cockpit if it's on or off. And then we also do have a power tilting and telescoping steering wheel. The Q7 also features all of the latest high-end safety technologies such as automatic emergency braking as well as pedestrian detection and adaptive cruise control lane departure alert and rear cross traffic alert. Dual cup holders and you'll find your 12 volt power outlet. And this is your main controller for the Audi MMI interface, which I'll get to in just a minute. And we have your electronic parking brake. Not a whole lot of center console storage. Um, it's pretty small, and that can be a little bit of a problem, especially if you have a large family that carries a lot of items with them for most of the time. And we, ha we do have two USB charging ports down here, as well as an auxiliary input. box compartment lined with felt very high quality four zone automatic climate control of course you can control the rear climate functions from the back but up front we have dual here and you have your temperatures which you control from the dials 
as well as your fan speed levels with the toggle switches and the different zones too. And you could set the rear from up front if you like, or you can sync it together. And then we also do have your off button too. But very high quality feeling buttons, they don't feel cheap at all. And I love how they went with traditional toggle switches and buttons here. We do have three stage heated seats for the driver and the front passenger, as well as ventilated seats too. You have your Audi Drive Select system, which you can control many different uh, driver selectable modes. And I'll show you up on the screen which mode you're in. Automatic start stop system off button. And that's pretty nice that you can turn it off. We do have your traction control off button, your parking sensors, as well as your downhill descent control. And you can also put the screen back into the dashboard if you would like. Up here, you'll find your auto dimming review mirror with an integrated compass, LED map lighting, have a pretty cool looking design to them garage home link as well as your panoramic moonroof with the power sliding shade certainly gives the cabin a much more open airy feel lets a lot a lot of light in to the cabin of course let's get to the audi mmi interface now we've seen this head unit many times here before it does feature 4g lte wi-fi and it's not a touchscreen here, of course, and it takes a little bit of time to get used to, but it's controlled by the touchpad as well as the buttons surrounding it. And this is your main menu right here. And coming to your audio sources, you do have all of the norm, including AM, FM, XM, satellite radio, of course. And then you could select your presets from here, as well as it gives you Sirius XM alerts too. And your external media devices do include all of the norm. You have your USB port with iPod integration, auxiliary input, as well as your CD player too, and then SD card slot. And we have a 19 speaker Bose surround sound system, which sounds fantastic. Then you have your telephone, which gives you a directory. You have your integrated dial pad too, and you could select your favorites. Then we have your navigation system, and you can enter in your destination by voice, or you can write it in on the touchpad by your finger, which is pretty cool. And Audi was actually the first auto manufacturer to have this feature. And you could select by your points of interest, online search, my Audi contacts, and it gives you uh, geographical coordinates too. And the map quality is pretty good. Right now we're in night mode. And it gives you live traffic, all that good stuff, of course. You have your map settings, route criteria, the navigation settings too. Then we have your Audi Connect. Like your Google Earth, and you could do a software update. And gives you other vital information such as fuel prices, weather, parking information, online news, city events, travel information, flight information. And you also have Twitter too. And then we have your Audi smartphone interface, which is for your Apple CarPlay and then Android Auto as well. Other settings that you could change here for the MMI interface include the date and time, language, units of measurement. You could change the display brightness and you can return to your factory settings if you would like. And we have your vehicle, which there's many different uh, driver selectable modes, of course with your Audi drive select system and you could select your different driver selectable modes by this button down here. We have your off-road mode which will actually turn off the Audi pre-sense system and then you have your comfort, automatic, dynamic, individual as well. And other vehicle settings such as the exterior lighting, 
interior lighting, central locking, garage door opener, and your driver assistance. So you can set your speed warning, parking aid, Audi presense. And give it an early warning, medium, late. And your Audi side assist for your blind spot detection. That's basically your blind spot detection. And then your rain sensor for your rain sensing windshield wipers. And your air conditioning too. Service and checks, like your tire pressure monitor, oil level, service intervals, and your wiper change position. And then you have an onboard owner's manual too. But overall, the Audi MMI interface is an excellent head unit and system, but it takes a little bit of time to get used to. To get into the third row of the Q7, it's a fairly easy mechanism. Just pull up on this lever right here, pull up on this, and push, pull the seat up like that, easy as that, and you just hop right in. Interior quality does follow through in the rear. Plenty of soft touch materials back here. And you have manual rear window sunshades. Rear adjustable headrest for all three seats. Now sitting back here in the Q7, there's plenty of leg room and plenty of headroom. And you can control your rear climate functions from back here, of course, with your fan speed levels and different zones for each passenger, except for the middle seat. Then you have dual cup holders, as well as a rear center armrest. And the seats themselves are fairly comfortable and pretty soft. Dual map pockets as well. All right. The third row of the Q7 is certainly very tight. Recommended only for small children, really. And we have cup holders back here. And the seats themselves are fairly firm and there's not a whole lot of thigh support either. But you do have rear adjustable headrest back here, which is nice. All right. The maximum cargo capacity for the Q7 is around 71.6 cubic feet, which is a little on the smaller side when you compare it to other midsize crossovers in the class. But you do have power folding third row seats, which does come as standard equipment, which is nice. And of course, you can fold down the second row if you would like. And you have your power tailgate. So with its superb combination of style, performance, driving dynamics, and high-end technology, the 2018 Audi Q7 is a very compelling and admirable choice among mid-size luxury crossovers. So remember that this is Cameron Birch from Cameron's Car Reviews.